Hello everyone. This is a short video tutorial to illustrate the steps required to configure the Notepad++ editor on Windows so as to allow you to compile and run a Java program within the Notepad++ editor and consequently not having to use the command prompt. In this video I am using Windows 7 but the steps should equally work for Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. For those of you who use the Linux or Mac OS operating systems, unfortunately Notepad++ is not available for those systems. This video tutorial assumes you have already downloaded and installed the Notepad++ editor. The target audience of this video tutorial are those who are relatively new to Java programming and for whom the use of a professional integrated development environment, or IDE for short, such as Eclipse and NetBeans, is too advanced at this stage. The solution provided in this video is a happy medium between a basic text editor and a fully professional IDE. So, let us briefly recap what a novice Java programmer is normally required to do when compiling their first program, Hello World.java. Well, as you can see, I've already typed the Hello World.java program here within Notepad. So the first step and that novice programmer would have to do is to save the file. So I shall save it in my downloads folder for the moment. So type hello world. Note the file name must be the same name as the class name. So hello world.java. Okay. Next I would have to open up the command prompt and I would have to locate to the directory where the file is stored. I can see the directory is stored here. See downloads. So I would have to change to that folder. Okay, dir, and there the file hello world.java is there. So to compile the program, a novice program would normally have to type, and any program would have to type java c and the name of the program. Dot java. Okay, java c is not recognized because it's not on my path. So I have to manually type um, java c explicitly specifying its path and in my case I've installed Java in C Java JDK 180 bin that's where the Java executable is located. Now I type hello world dot Java and it could not find load hello world dot Java. Ah sorry I typed java.exe <laughs> I should have typed See the way we can Java C, I beg your pardon. <laughs> okay, that's compiled successfully. And now I have to type Java. <laughs> Hello world. This time I don't have the extension. I must leave, I must omit the extension, not Java. And there we go, it's run. So that's briefly what you would normally have to do. So I'm just going to exit the command uh, uh, prompt now. But by the end of this video, you will be able to compile and run any Java program by simply clicking on the macro menu in the menu option here and selecting a compile and run option that will be available. There will be no need to open up the command prompt and manually type the Java C or Java commands again. Okay. So the first step is to install a plugin called NPPExec, which is a shortened form of Notepad++ Execute. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, you select the plugins option from the menu and you select plugin manager, show plugin manager as I'm doing now. This will present the list of the plugins that are available. Okay, we can click and see the plugins that we have installed. First verify that it's not already installed and as you can see there is no NPP EXEC here, therefore I must install it. So scroll down, the plugins should be sorted in alphabetical order. So I shall scroll down to NPP, and there is NPP, and I see NPP exec here. So simply select it, so now that it's ticked, it's highlighted, and click install. So it'll go off to the internet and download it and install it. And there we go. So it, it informs me that Notepad++ needs to be restarted for changes to take effect. Would you like to do this now? Yes, I would. So there we go. So it should be installed and available to the system. So we shall verify that now. And there it is, perfect. So that's step one complete. The next step is that we wish to configure this plugin. 
So do what I've just done, select the plugin menu, npxec, and disable console display console command history. So disable that for the moment, that's the first thing. The second thing is to select the option follow current directory as demonstrated. Okay. So we now see that console commands has been deselected and follow current directory has been selected. That's fine. So that's that step complete. The third step is to define is to define the functions that allow us to compile and run our Java programs. So once again, select plugins, npexec, and execute. Okay. Now, choose cancel if a save file dialog box appears. In my case, it hasn't appeared, so that's okay. But if in your case it does, just choose cancel, and then it will present the window that you see here. Okay. So, you have to type in two commands. The first command is what I'm putting in here. I'm going to cut and paste it from another document, but you can see it there. It's cd dollar current directory within parentheses. And the second line we have to uh, type in is the line to compile a program, the Java C command. But note, I've specified the full path of the Java C command followed by the command itself. And then there is a dollar and file name. And that tells us, that tells, should I say, Notepad++, the plugin npxec, to compile in this manner. So at the moment, the file is, is entitled with a temporary script name. We wish to choose a specific name for that. So we, we can select save, and that prompts us for a name. So we type compile as our name, okay? And we type save, or we would rather, should, should we, we type compile and we click save. And there we go. So we do something similar again. We cut and paste, uh, we have the cd current directory command, and then we replace the com compile command with a run command. So as you can see here, I've cut and pasted in the command for running a Java program. So similar to the last time, we have the full path to the Java command followed by the Java command itself. And then this time we have the name part as opposed to file name, because remember, when compiling with Java, we don't specify the .java extension or the .class extension. We just simply specify the name part of the file without the extension. So again, we have to choose to compile, choose to save this. So first select temporary script. Ah, it reset that. Fine, let me do that again. So temporary script effectively is a way of saying a new script. So I'm just going to quickly redo what I just did. And it's good that you see me making these mistakes because if you make these mistakes yourself, you'll recognize what to do. So this time, again, so note, I've got CD current directory and this time the compile, the, the run command is supposed to compile. So you can always pause this video to see exactly what the text is there. So click save. This time I choose run as a script name and click save. Now I'm going to save one more command script. So I'm going to select temporary script again, which should reset that as it did. Perfect. And now I'm actually going to put in the option to, com to compile and run all in one. So this was originally our compile command. This was originally our run command. So I'm now going to say save, and I'm going to choose the appropriate name, which is compile and run, and click save. And then click OK. And as you can see, it actually compiled and ran it right now. But I did not mean to show that now, but there you go. You can actually see what it did. It effectively exited out temporarily to the command prompt. It invoked the compile command, as you can see here. The process finished successfully. It then invoked the run command. The process started. It actually ran the program printing hello world, as exactly what it's meant to do as demonstrated here, and it exited. I did not have to go to the command prompt at all. That's effectively what allows us to do. Okay, but we're not finished yet. The, the prompts are there, but they're currently not available from our macro. We want to make them available from the macro menu. So, in order to do that, we have to go to the advanced options, okay? We go plugins, np exec, and select 
advanced options as I'm doing here. Okay? Okay, very good. First thing to do is to enable the macros submenu as I'm doing here. Click there. Okay. Then select the scripts that we wish to put in our menu. So for the first script, we select compile and it automatically has placed the item menu compile here, which is what we want. Simply click add modify. And if you notice, it places it in the menu here. Perfect. Next, select the run script. Now, before you click add modify, be sure to type in run in the item name as I've done. Then click add modify and it adds in run. And lastly, select compile and run. And again, change the item name to compile and run as I'm doing and select add modify. And that puts it into our macro sub menu, which is exactly what we want. Okay. So all we now do is simply select okay. And it should prompt us to restart to apply the options. Okay. It has not restart. So I recommend that we actually restart now. But before I do, I just want to show you, you may find this frustrating later on when you simply want to edit a text file. So simply to close the console here, simply select the X here, and that's that. I put, it, it disappears. So I'm now going to exit Notepad++, and I'm going to restart it. Okay, and now I'm going to select the macro menu, and as you can see, there is the options. So if I wish to compile this program, I simply select compile, and as you can see, it's compiling. If I wish to run it, I select run. And as you can see, it just ran it there. And if I wish to compile and run in one go, as you can see, it has compiled it and it has run it and displayed our output here. So it's really, really nice. So that's most of what I want to show you. But one more step, one more added convenience is to add shortcut keys for these options. It'd be nice to have a shortcut menu, just like see these shortcuts here for playback and trim and trailing. We can add a shortcut menu for these, for those of us who prefer to use the keyboard. So to do that, you select settings, shortcut mapper, and that presents us with this dialog. So the main menu is selected. We want to add a shortcut for a plugin, so we select plugin commands. Fine. So these are all the various commands associated with the plugins. So if we simply scroll down until we find the commands related to our um, Java compiling, and we can see them here, compile, run, and compile and run. Perfect. So we just wish to add a shortcut key to that. So if we select double click in the box directly opposite compile, in the, in the, the column labeled shortcut, so compile, double click, and it gives us an option what to select. So I'm going to select a simple option, control and the number one, and that will compile in my program. Select OK. Oops, I selected the wrong one, my mistake. Um, there you go, I just made a simple mistake, but don't worry, we're going to reset that down here. Scroll to compile and run. So I'll do that again. Control and one. And this time it's set it. And if you notice control and one that appeared there, ah, it should have been gone, but it isn't. Now I didn't plan to do that. So just for the moment, ah, none, perfect. None and none, problem solved. This will disable the accelerator. So if, I'm, if you make a mistake like I did, this is how you disable it. And there you go, perfect. So it's good, just in case you make a mistake like I did, you now know how to undo it. So with run, I'm going to select control and two, and that's the numeric two, the number two. And lastly, to compile and run is going to be control and three. And click OK, and there they are. Perfect. Oh, sorry. And then close. That's fine. So now I'm actually going to press, press and hold control and select one, the number one. And it did not work. So I must, is there some other option I've omitted to do? No, maybe I have to restart. So we'll try and restart and see what happens. Okay, restart. 
and there is control on one, control on two to run, and control on three as you can see there. It's both compile and run. Okay, so that's the bulk of what I wanted to show you. I suppose last but not least, I just wish to say that there is a deeper motivation behind this video. Briefly, in 1984, uh, a man called David Kolb published what is considered a groundbreaking book called Experiential Learning, Experience as a Source of Learning and Development. There, I've just, I'll highlight the name here. In essence, he introduced an experiential process and explained the learning process uh, as experienced through reflection, abstraction and active experimentation in conjunction with concrete experience. So you can see the life cycle there. In essence, it facilitates an accelerated learning life cycle. How, you may ask, does it do this? Essentially, feedback that is received sooner and more frequently allows for corrective action to be taken at an earlier stage in the learning process. And hence, this leads not only to better learning outcomes, but better learning outcomes in less time. Thus, it is a win-win situation. And this is the pedagogical reasoning underlying my motivation to making this video tutorial, to help you learn more in less time. And that's exactly what this option does. Rather than having to go to command prompt, type and slow you down, you can literally click compile and run. You can get your corrective, um, uh, you can get your feedback quicker and sooner, and hence you can learn more in less time. Okay, that is it. Thank you very much. I hope this video is of use to you and of a benefit.